Let's go over um, conductors briefly. I'm going to left mouse double click on this conductor. Um, we have all sorts of different units, U.S. metric, Canadian standards per unit information. I'm going to leave it in U.S. for now. We can have any number per phase of conductors. We can have any type of conductor, one conductor, three conductor, interlocked armor, aluminum, interlocked armor, steel, messenger aerial. If we pick Canadian, there's the TEC models and things. Um, I'm just going to pick a one conductor. We have all the different insulation types, the cross-length polyethylenes or the XHH series, the thermoplastics, the TH series, the heat-resistant rubbers or EPRs, the RH series, even if you're going back into the old legacy systems with paper-insulated lead conductors, um, we have those models. Now, if, if you're doing high-voltage or medium-voltage conductors, the insulation parameters change, and then you get you know shielding tapes and things like that that are available. Um, actually, we'll pick a 90-degree C there. Um, any size from 2000 KCMIL to 14 AWG and in between. Or you can have metric sizes, um, Canadian sizes, which kind of mix things sometimes. The length in feet, we need to know what that is. It shows the little red dot. So we're going to walk that distance off. Um, typically in a three-foot, you know, I take um, steps. A three-foot step, count the number of steps, multiply by three, account for up, over, and down, um, any large radius bends. We need to know if this um, conductor, is it direct buried in the ground? Is it in a conduit? Is it in tray? Or is it in air? Okay, very simple. You know what it is. If it's direct buried with earth all around it, um, that's direct buried. If it's in conduit, it's in conduit, and so on. We need to know whether that conduit is magnetic or one of the non-magnetic types because what that does is it allows us to calculate these different impedances um, based on that information. You'll notice that it gives you the 90 degree C rating based on that insulation type. It also derates for the 75 degree C terminal rating, which we use in all of our design work. We can derate further by any different type of duct bank configuration. Um, this is all customizable. Um, number of fill and tray and things like that. Geometry, you can get very fancy and specify different conductor spacing in geometry, whether the conductor is flat lay, triangular, right triangular lay, conduit size and information, ground information, neutral wires, um, harmonics for everything. It can be very detailed if you choose it to be. For a standard arc flash study, you're only going to fill out the spec tab, and that's, that's good enough. Now, we also have what is called um, the ability to change the graphics. So I'm just changing these graphics slightly. So you're going to see that in this case, we've shown a, the conduit system as a dotted line. We may want to show the rest of that. I can right mouse click then, copy left mouse click, press slide release, and paste, and there's an entire system. Now, the goal of what you're doing when you're creating a one-line diagram is create the one-line, do not enter the data until you create a one-line, because your system is going to have um, multiple substations that are very similar, um, unless it's a very small system. Take almost any system you know, they probably installed three General Electric or three Cutler Hammer or three Square D substations um, that were almost identical with just minor variations. So create the one line, use the copy and paste function, and you'll reduce the amount of effort in half. So now here's an entire system. I can left mouse click and highlight that. Right mouse click, copy. Right mouse click, paste. I left mouse click, snap it over. And there's my identical substation. I can just left mouse click, snap this in. I can change my names to any equipment information that I would like. So all these names are, are variables that you can change. And there's my system. So that's how we create a one-line diagram. If you go to Tools, Options, and you want to 
change the color code information, just select this little button, show equipment colors based on this um, voltage chart, and you can change all these colors. It's completely user-definable. And there's there's my color information. I usually save that for um, maybe the final report information. I like to leave that off, leave everything black. Then what I do is I'm creating a one line. I'll highlight different areas by going up to the color palette and I may highlight colors um, where I create a legend that says, okay, this color has data that is assumed and I'm waiting for data from the factory or from uh, uh, the client. Um, another color might be, you know, some other type of variable. So we do that a lot. If we want to add notes, I can go up and grab a note and snap in a note. So there's a note describing this information about the, that uh, transformer. If I want to print, I can go to File, Print, Standard Windows Command. It's going to bring up a dialog box. I can print the entire one line. I can print the current window I'm looking at or a named view. I can print inside a rubber rectangular box. It will automatically scale to fit whatever drawing size you have or you can scale it to a certain percentage for any drawing size. You can print borders. You can print title blocks with all your own different comments, your own graphics, your own logos. It's fully customizable. It's just a matter of clicking and printing. Now we can also go to File Export and we can DXF to AutoCAD, Intergraph, MicroStation, um, any of the CAD programs. We can DWF to the AutoCAD viewer. We can export all of our data files to any database. We can file database report. Okay, That's going to give us a list of all the data equipment in the system. These little tabs down on the bottom allow us to look at any spe um, specific piece of equipment. In this case we have four transformers on the one line. We can, we can customize reports that are all column-based, so you can have specific named reports for short circuit or power flow or harmonics or arc flash hazard, depending on how you want to report specific jobs. So these can be all custom named reports, or you can name them per your client or um, your uh, own official standards. You can click on any piece of equipment, and automatically change it with the dialog box information. All the different equipment is here and available for reporting. So that's the basics for creating a one-line diagram in EasyPower.